Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, some people asked for a tutorial on the transmat effect, but I was never really happy with it. I don't want to make a tutorial on it because it was really gimmicky. And honestly, I could barely get it to work. It pretty much was like hand animated the entire time, but I have a much better system that is pretty foolproof um, and just works. Um, so as you can see here on this Genji model, it just, just works how you want it. You can scale it. That's pretty much all just based off of a nice, easy control empty. Um, and also it is an exceptionally easy shader to set up. It's pretty much two parts all driven from one texture. So we will set that up right now. We'll just add in a little cube and this will be what we build our material off. So we're just going to drag open a shader editor over here um and make a new material we're just going to name it i don't know uh teleport effects or something like that uh actually it's based off the transmat effect from destiny but either way um so it's based entirely off of just a gradient texture for the most part we're just going to set this to a spherical gradient and with the node wrangler press Control t otherwise just add a texture coordinate and uh, I've already added an empty, so add an empty as your controller. I find the circle one is pretty useful just to kind of preview the bounds as you'll see in a moment, but just select the empty as the object and put the object into this vector coordinates. Now, if we preview our gradient texture and start messing with our empty, you can kind of see the effect we're gonna be creating here. So we'll just go back in here and we need to button this up a little bit. So if we just search for a, what's these, a, color ramp here. Um, I know you can do this with math nodes as well. I'm just really not good with math nodes um, with clamping and stuff like that. So I just do it kind of a dumb way. Uh, just move a color ramp over. Uh, so it's kind of uh, one in one. I know you can use constant, but this way works fine and it'll look better later on as well. So now pressing control shift D will duplicate it while still keeping it connected. And on this upper one, we just want to add in a new handle and now, whoops, grab this middle handle and drag it over to the right and set its color all the way to black. What we want to do is create a bit of a ring. So, you know, just set these kind of in the middle here, close it in, that looks good. And now we want to distort this ring with some procedural noise. So add in a noise texture and add in generated from the texture coordinates to the vector of this. Now, if we hold control shift and right click gradient texture down to noise texture, we will add in a mix and automatically connect them. And we just want to change it from mix to multiply. Now you can kind of see here, it's getting a little bit distorted. So slide the factor all the way over, gets even more. And now you kind of have some creative uh, freedom. You can mess with the scale, uh, crank the detail. And I like to add a bit of distortion, kind of makes it look a little bit like flames ever so slightly. Uh, I'm just gonna there you go, I like that. Um, and that's pretty much the shader done because now we have two masks. We have a emission mask and we have a alpha mask. So the next thing to do is just to set our material. If you're using Eevee, make sure you set it to alpha hash, alpha hash, um, just so that there will actually be transparency. And now hook things up, take this, put it into the alpha, take our emission, put it into the emission strength, give ourselves a nice cool color and now preview your principal BSDF. And as you can see, that's just it. Selecting our uh, empty will let us scale it and animate it. And if you want a more powerful emission, just add in a math node, set it to multiply, and then crank it to something like 15. Now you've got a very nice bright edge around your transmat effect. Now, if you're gonna be adding this to uh, characters, especially more complicated ones, like for instance, a Destiny character, um, I recommend you make a node group out of it. Because as you can see here, it looks really great. It all works together, but there's multiple pieces all with different materials. Um, and, and also they don't use the principal BSDF. They use a special custom Destiny shader, but not the point. Um, so the node group is super simple. Just now, instead of going into the principal B BSDF, you have the emission going into a mix, which is a combination of the uh, group input, which is just um, the regular shader. 
mixed with the emission with set to you know something like 15 and then you have another mix shader going uh, mixing this combination with a transparency and that's just going out and now there's just no group you can drag and drop and it plays super nicely you can also take this empty and you can parent it to the um, armature so let's say this is all animated this empty will move around with your character so you can have them walk into scene and only actually animate halfway through anyways yeah this is a a node group that is super simple super good it was inspired both off my original and i saw uh someone i think it was a uh, loki transforming effect um they were doing it for a different application but i thought it was a really cool principle um so anyways i kind of mod podge the two together and i find this to be super cool super effective i hope you have a lot of fun with it um just to say something about this model um it doesn't work in cycles it creates a bunch of gunk i don't know why but it works totally fine on other models like going back to the genji one no issue works totally fine um yeah looks great works great uh i hope you have a lot of fun with this and i hope this helped uh let me know what you want to see in the future I like making tutorials and sharing stuff. I just don't know what people care about seeing. So, thanks.